This recipe works great with a lot of different fish, but particularly well with firm white meat fish such as halibut, striped bass, or wahoo. For the baked wahoo, we're gonna make a teriyaki sauce out of soy sauce, pureed ginger, and crushed diced garlic. You're gonna add some brown sugar or white sugar until it starts to thicken up a little bit, and uh, just taste it. It should make a nice, strong teriyaki sauce. Put it in a bag with the wahoo steak, marinate it for about an hour or so, then put it on a baking sheet at 450 degrees Fahrenheit, bake it for about 10 minutes, reapply the glaze, bake it for another 10 minutes. You can get away with less time if it's a thinner, smaller steak. It should be a little bit of firmness to the steak when it's done. This is absolutely delicious. This recipe works really good with any sweet white meat seafood, such as shrimp, snakehead, crappie, mangrove snapper, sheep's head, grouper, and many others. That is a pretty white meat right there. All you do is you take salted snakehead fillets in portion size, you're rolling in all-purpose flour, then egg, then a mixture of one part panko breadcrumbs and one part sweetened coconut shavings. Then you're putting it on a cookie sheet, and you're baking it in the oven at 375 for about 10 minutes or until it's golden brown. And for the sauce, you're just taking mango puree and you're reducing it by half. It takes about an hour. Just simmer it until it's really thick and just drips off a spoon. Oh, nice. There we go, coconut crusted snakehead with mango reduction, some uh, salad and pineapple, a little wedge of lime. Oh, this is beautiful stuff, guys. Or the coke mango sauce on top. You like that? I like that. That's pretty good. It's with pretty the good. lime too. This smoked teriyaki recipe works really good with lots of different species of fish, but I particularly like it with salmon, trout, and Asian carp. Now here's a really great smoke recipe. Take a gallon of soy sauce and about a pound of ginger. ginger. Cut the ginger thin and put it in with the soy sauce. Then take about 20 cloves of garlic, add it into the pot as well. Then you're going to want about four cups of sugar and about a gallon of water and this is gonna make a kick butt brine for smoking fish. It's a teriyaki flavored brine, super easy to make. Boil it for about 10, 20 minutes to get all the flavors mixed and then let it cool down. Then cut up the fish into nice chunks and pour the cooled brine all over the fillets so that everything's kind of floating. It doesn't have to be deep, it just has to be covering everything. Let your meat soak in the brine for about a day and then take it out and put it in the smoker. Two rows of carp in here, two rows of carp in there, more carp in there, and then we've got the element with apple wood chips. Cook your fish for about eight hours if you want a really soft meat. Smoke it for about 24 hours if you want something more like jerky. And you want the temperature between about 120 to 175. This is what beautiful Asian carp fillets look like after about 20, 24 hours of smoking. Gorgeous color, beautiful flavor. Oh, that's good. That's really good. Fish and chips works great with any white meat fish, whether saltwater or freshwater. Cod, whiting, pollock, halibut, and catfish are just a few. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? Beautiful, fresh caught fish and chips on the bank of a river. I got some malt vinegar here that I'm gonna put on it. That was good. Poke tacos is delicious with any sashimi grade fish, but particularly yellowfin, blackfin, and bluefin tuna. For the poke tacos, we're gonna make a pico de gallo out of mango and kiwi. So take one mango and dice it up as finely as you can. 
and then two or three kiwis slice them up uh, you're looking for like quarter inch cubes or smaller and put it all into a bowl one part mango to one part kiwi then do the cilantro dice it up put about half in the pico de gallo and set aside the other half to be topped on the taco then slice and dice a fine red tomato get nice small pieces mix it all together you can add garlic and chili peppers if you like as well um, then a couple limes crushed into the pico de gallo and just let it sit for 30 40 minutes then slice up some ripe avocado you want it thin and long and then make a sauce out of soy sauce ginger puree and rice vinegar you want one part rice vinegar to three parts soy sauce mix it all up taste it make sure you like it and then get some tuna steak and you're going to slice it about half inch thick and then cube it up nice and fine <laughs> Just go ahead and make the tacos like you normally would. Some lettuce, pico de gallo, cilantro, avocado. Then dip the tuna meat in the sauce briefly and put it on your taco. It's absolutely delicious. I got greedy and put too much on it. Happens every time. That is really, really delicious. Seared tuna steak is a great recipe for any sashimi grade fish, particularly yellowfin tuna. For the seared tuna, you're gonna wanna marinate it for about an hour or so. Take some soy sauce, some ginger puree and rice vinegar and make kind of the same sort of sauce and just let it soak in the bag all mixed up for about an hour or so. When you pull it out, you're gonna make a rub. You want some crushed uh, rock salt, some fresh ground pepper and lots of paprika and just rub it in really good. You're gonna sear the tuna steak in sesame oil on a low medium to medium heat and you wanna time it so you get equal amount of time on all the sides. And you want a nice warm but pink middle. Now, if you really wanna cook it all the way through, you can be a heathen and do that, but pink in the middle is best. And you top it off with some sesame seeds and voila. It tastes like the softest, most marbled beef steak you've ever had. Mm. This recipe works well with any firm white meat fish fresh water or salt water. All right, I'm gonna show you how to make the best halibut fish tacos ever. Take a piece of iceberg lettuce, smash the stem, pull it out, then dice it up really small. There's your lettuce. Now for the pico de gallo, take a couple of tomatoes, nice ripe ones, dice them really fine, sprinkle it with a little bit of salt for flavor, set it aside in a little Tupperware dish. All right, then you take a whole red onion, dice it up really fine, mix it in there. Take a whole head of garlic, Dice up the garlic cloves real fine, throw it in there. You're gonna want lots of garlic. Garlic is awesome. Then take two whole uh, lemons and squeeze them in there. A whole bunch of cilantro, Chop, dice it up really fine. There you go. Let it sit for about a, a day to really get the flavors mixed together. Then for the sauce, we're gonna take two cups of mayonnaise. We're gonna take some cumin. Dump it in there, uh, about oh, a teaspoon or two, depending on how, you, how strong you like it. A bunch of cilantro, maybe two if you like it. And then add some peppers. So we've got some jalapenos here. Um, anywhere between two to 12 jalapenos works. Depends on how much spice and flavor you like. The longer the sauce sits in the fridge, the stronger it's going to get because of that spice leaching into the mayonnaise. Now we don't like really spicy food in our family, so I'm just using like three or four jalapenos. Then cut up a lime and squeeze that sucker into your sauce and add a little bit of salt and then blend that up as best you can, either with a hand blender or you know, like a smoothie machine. Put it into a little squeeze bottle, stick that in your fridge, it'll last weeks. Then take a couple sleeves of saltine crackers, put them in a bag and punch the poop out of them. And then take some fillets and get the skins off them. Cut the fish into half inch to uh, three quarters of an inch long strips like this. And once you've got that done, put some eggs, about four eggs, into a bowl, mix it up. And then get some all-purpose flour and then salt the fish a little bit. Roll the fish and some flour, shake off the excess, then roll it in the beaten eggs, then shake off the excess, then roll it in the crumbled up saltine crackers. And there you go. Next, take some peanut oil and put about half an inch to an inch of oil in a frying pan on medium heat. The oil shouldn't be smoking, but it should be hot enough to cook the nuggets to a deep golden brown in about three minutes. 
key is don't overcook these things. Get them to brown up, then get them out, put them on a paper plate on a towel to soak up all the excess oil, and place another towel and plate on it and flip it over to dab off the oil on the top of the nuggets as well. And this is what it looks like. Hot, steaming, moist, fresh Alaskan halibut. Oh, it's so good. Put some fish on a tortilla, get sauce, pico de gallo, lettuce, wrap it all up. You are golden. Best fish tacos you'll ever eat. Do you like it, Bega? Very much. It's very good. This recipe works well with any fish worth eating, whether it's catfish, salmon, tuna, doesn't matter. Take a metal tablespoon and scrape it along the spine and ribs where the fillet came off. Whole spoonfuls of meat shavings should come off, and you can get a substantial amount of catfish meat that was left behind by the flaying process. Okay, for the catfish cakes, take the shaved meat that you scraped off with a spoon, put it in a dish and bake it in the oven about 375 degrees for about five, 10 minutes or until it's cooked all the way through. Pull it out, let it cool, and once it's cool, squish it up in your hands nice and, and even so it's just all mushed up. Then you're gonna take uh, about six or eight Ritz crackers, mush them up in the bag, until they're finely ground up and you're gonna add the crumbs into the bowl. And you're gonna take one egg and you're gonna mix that in too. You get a handful of chopped onions, a handful of green onions, and then you're gonna add the seasoning, which is a little bit of plain old yellow mustard. Then do a couple dashes of Old Bay seasoning. This recipe is really flexible, so don't worry about being precise. Then one dollop of mayonnaise, you're gonna mix it all up until it's nice and mushy. Then you're gonna take some peanut oil and put it in a, in a dish, and you want it to be about as deep as about the thickness of the patty. Heat up the oil and test it with a little bit of uh, patty. They should be cooked all the way through in one to two minutes. It's not a lot of cooking on these. They should be a nice golden brown Put them on a towel to soak up the extra oil, and you can either eat them in a sandwich like a po' boy, or you can eat them plain with a little bit of tartar sauce. This recipe works really well with any freshwater fish and many mild flavored saltwater fishes, but particularly well with catfish and redfish. To make blackened catfish, basically what you're doing is rubbing the, the fillets with seasonings and then frying it really hot in butter and oil. And uh, to do that, I'm gonna use this blackened redfish magic. Watch the wind blow it all off the table. It's like ending up all over here. <laughs> Got blackened catfish, jambalaya, collard greens. Not too shabby. Let's try out these little bullheads. Mm, tastes good. This is my absolute favorite way to eat trout and salmon, but it also works well with halibut and many other types of fish. All right, let's get cooking. Okay, first things first, get a couple sticks of unsalted butter and we're gonna melt it. Now we got the butter all melted, we're gonna add about equal parts brown sugar. Does that look good, Tom? Yeah. See, this is why you leave the skins on and you put the tin foil down. That skin is gonna stick right to the tin foil and come off. And we're gonna make a mess. And that is why you put tin foil on the grill. Look at that mess. This is how you go to Alaska right here. This is what fishing's all about. I've never had. I mean, this is really good. Oh, I'm glad you and like I, it. And I gotta tell you, I enjoyed it, and I'm not a huge seafood fan. This recipe is very simple, and just about any fish will taste delicious this way. All right, I've got some coarse sea salt here. Just a little bit of black pepper with some fine iodized salt. So we're gonna go ahead and put the basket just like that. You can cook this recipe at home simply by putting the fillets on a cooking sheet and broiling it at about 375 degrees. Got some chives.
So on the carp fillets, the skin side, it's a little bit blackened, that's perfect. Now we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna take the little coals out of there and cook it at a little bit lower heat. This is a kumquat, like a little tiny orange that you can eat the peel. Absolutely wonderful, delicious little fruit. All right, got some ginger puree. I'm gonna put that in there. You know, you can make this mixture as sweet or as sour as you want. If it's a little bit too sour, just go and add a little sugar to it. If it gets a little too dry, add a splash of water just to wetten it back up. Let's check the fish. Oh, look at that. Nice and brown, got drippings there. That looks perfect. You gotta have some cilantro. Gotta warm up our tortillas here. Just put them right down on these hot rocks. And let's check on our corn. Let's make up some carp tacos here. There we go, a carp taco on a warm tortilla, some artisan lettuce, kumquat salsa, and a little cilantro. Mm. There we go, carp taco. All three of the boys are eating it, all three. They won't even all eat spaghetti. <laughs> Pretty much any white meat fish, whether it's firm or soft, will work really well in fish gyros. I've got our fillets in the pan. Want to get as much of the water off as we can. We want it to be damp, not wet. All right, now I'm going to cover it liberally in Old Bay seasoning here. Don't overdo fish. Fish doesn't take long to cook. Take out a little piece of this white bass here. Good. So what I'm gonna do is gonna put some fish here in this little pita. Squeeze a little lime on this. Put some cilantro in there. Love me some cilantro. Peppers, tomatoes, some onions. Maybe cram some greens in there too if there's some room. Little tajiki sauce. We're gonna try this out. Yeah, that works real well. You can't have a catfish po' boy without catfish, but you can use a lot of white meat fish for this recipe, including largemouth bass and many sea fish. Some buttermilk. Okay. Put those fillets in there, let them soak. While the catfish is soaking the buttermilk, we're gonna get some hush puppies going. Stand. All right, we got some fish fry mix here. Mm. All right, we got all of our veggies cut up and ready to go. We'll set that aside. Pull these fillets out of the buttermilk. Let them drip dry a little bit. We're gonna put some salt on them. Some pepper. And a little Old Bay seasoning. Pull these fillets out. Gonna roll them in the fish fry. There we go. Got that ready to go. All right, let the hush puppy mix sit for about seven to 10 minutes. Now we're gonna drop a little balls of it into the hot peanut oil. Hit the tartar sauce right there. Mm. You wanna try one? I do, I'm a little worried that they're super hot. <laughs> Oh yeah, put that in my 
goodie basket. There you go guys, catfish po' boy sandwich, fried hush puppies, coleslaw, chips, macaroni salad. Oh my Here goodness. you go. Thank you. That's <laughs> Got huge. that? <laughs> That's huge. All right, bon appetit, babe. Okay. Even though this recipe was designed for eel, lots of mild flavored fish work really well broiled this way. Okay. Ugliest eel filet ever. Check. Scour the meat with a, a knife to just kind of cut it, allow it to cook more evenly, and baste it thoroughly in this unagi sauce I got at the store. And uh, just want to cover everything very generously, and you can even baste it a couple times while you're cooking. Then you get yourself a nice uh, charcoal fire going. Just uh, throw in some, some hardwood charcoal. And once you've got uh, a shallow bed of coals, you want it so that you can hold your hand over the fire for about the count of three. That's the temperature you want. And then just lay that frying basket on there. And it'll sit for about oh, four or five minutes max. And then you just flip it and you can even baste it a couple times in there. And just uh, make sure it's nice and generously moistened with uh, that unagi sauce. Oh, that's gorgeous. Whew, just starting to blacken on the edges. Once everything's cooked up, you want to cut the uh, eel fillets into thin little strips. And uh, then you're going to cut up some very finely cut cabbage and slice up some pickled daikon and assemble it all in a bowl. Now, one thing about this recipe that I did wrong is I left the skin on the eel. And the Japanese, traditional Japanese recipe, you leave the skin on, but their eels are much, much smaller and their skin is very thin. With these eels, the skin is really thick and it's a little too chewy. So uh, if I had to do this over again, would take the skins off when I was flaying the fish. Well, there you go. Unagi don. Any type of fish will taste good in this recipe, but you'll need large chunks of flesh. So a medium to large fish is necessary. Jay, my boy, is gonna hook us up with a Bangladeshi carp recipe, right? Yes, sir. Just gonna dump them in here. Some Old Bay seasoning. Th this one is, um, it has a little bit of uh, chili powder, so just like, Good amount, you know. That's that's that should be enough. Sweet. I dump them. Oh, sorry. Did I, sorry. I should know what the 2020 is uh, because of uh, the salt makes the onion. Okay, okay, okay. Don't play, don't play, don't play. No. You wanna stand by Baba and see Baba make? Yeah. No, no, no. No. I think it's sure. not burning the onion. Sure. You know? So, it's like two. That's good. That's good. That's good. All right. Ooh, just put it on the element because I'm awesome that way. Yeah. See, that's good. Okay, okay we're gonna eat. Hold it. Just. Oh, that was so good. You wanna, you wanna show the ingredients on it? Uh, just a little bit. Okay. And the. Do it, like, that's fine. Actually, no. So much, just a little no, bit. No, no, see. <laughs> I've got some cumin. Oh, my hand. Yeah, yeah get your head up. Garlic powder. That goes your garlic powder, and cumin powder, your curry powder, turmeric, garam masala, cumin, paprika. Yeah, so. You have to be gentle when you're mixing them. Okay, okay so we'll just uh. Oh, you want to put it? Okay, okay. There we go, it's covered. Okay, get that. That's how it's supposed to be. Put Yeah, that looks that looks really good, man. That smells good too. It's not fishy smelling at all. There's zero fish smell. Here we go. That looks good. <laughs> it's really good, Jake. Yeah, man. I had like three servings of that. You know, 
This is a great way to cook any small whole fish and it's very simple and delicious. You can just slit the, the throat, then go down the chest cavity and then pull out all the guts and the gills. That works really well. So once you got everything clean, it should look like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. And this is what you're gonna need for the recipe. It's a really simple recipe. You got a little bag of flour, all-purpose flour, some normal table salt, or you can go fancy and get some coarse crystal sea salt. Um, and I've got this awesome lime flavored fish sauce. So I take the flour and I want about one part flour to like two parts salt, okay? So I'm gonna throw in a ton of this table salt. I've got way more flour and salt than I need, but you know, whatever, it's cheap. Um, and I'd add a little bit of the coarse salt just cause I have it handy. And then you throw the, the fish in, you roll them in the salt and flour, okay? And then I've got this little basket here for cooking the fish. But honestly, you could just put a stick in the fish's mouth and cook them over the fire like you would a hot dog. I put a little extra salt on there. Just get them really coated. You want them just absolutely covered. Watch this, buddy. Watch that. About 10, 15 minutes on each side, and it seems like it's perfect. So our fish are crusted in this salt, and all the juices are inside. And I've got this lime-flavored fish sauce. Whoa, that is so moist. I can't, I got to see. Gonna take a little bit of our sauce. I'm just gonna pour it right into the cap. That's our dipping bowl. <laughs> see, and just dip that in there. What does it Ooh, taste that, like? That is good. Thanks for watching. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you wanna see more information about catching and cooking the fish featured in this video, check the links down in the video description. And don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new videos every Saturday morning. And if you want to see more great cooking videos, also check out our other channel, the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>